Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk to you about how you can handle role-based access control or role-based permissions in Xano. So role-based access control is a security step you can take if you want to enforce that a user has a certain role or status in order to access and execute uh, certain API endpoints. So if I jump to my database here and we go ahead and look at my user table, uh, you might have a field that has some roles defined, and this might be something like an enum. And here you can see uh, of my five users, we have one admin and the rest are staff. So role-based access control or role-based permission is a way to look at the user's role and if it is the right role, allow them to execute the API endpoint. If it's the wrong role, it'll throw an error. So let's go ahead and look at an example here or two examples because there's two different methods to handle role-based permissions of enforcing that a user has the role of an admin in order to execute an API endpoint. So that would only be user one, which is me. So let's jump to the API here. Let's look at this example API group and let's go into the first method. So here in the first method um, API endpoint, let's notice a couple things. First, this API endpoint requires user authentication. So the user needs to actually be logged in or signed up and receive a JWE token uh, in order to access this API endpoint. If that's a new concept for you, please watch the video on authentication or read our documentation. So the first step in our function stack will be to get a record from the user. And if you look here, on the field value, we're going to want to look up the authenticated user ID. So we're going to use that auth token to find the ID of the user uh, that's accessing this endpoint and look up their user record. Once we do that, we'll call this the request. We'll have access to all that user's uh, information, including their role. Step two would be to set a precondition. And in a precondition, we can set conditions that must be true in order for this to pass. So here we can open this expression builder and we can go ahead and say this variable request, which is the user's record. And then we can say dot role, okay, must be equal to, and we'll say admin, okay? So this is just saying this user who is requesting this API endpoint, their role must be equal to admin, okay? For this to continue, we can set an error type such as access denied here. We could have an optional error message. I'll just have access denied. So only if this precondition passes will we be able to execute the rest of the function stack, which here we're just looking at all the user records. So let's go ahead and uh, actually run this. So if I go to run and debug here, and if I pick this easy auth token and let's get Liz for example. So Liv, Liz is a staff member, uh, that's her role. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll see we hit an error. It says, whoops, access denied. That's because Liz has the wrong role. But if I go ahead and choose uh, Michael, who has the role of admin, and I run this, well, he will have permission or that uh, role-based access to actually query all the records in the user table or whatever other business logic you may have in your function stack, okay? So that's method one. Let's jump back. And method two is using something called extras, okay? So extras, and I'm gonna take a step back and explain what extras are. Uh, extras are a way to put additional information in an authentication token uh, that must be defined at the time the user authenticates, so during either sign up or log in. So let's actually jump back to um, our auth endpoints here, and let's look at our login one where I've set up extras. So here in our login endpoint, if we go to the step where we create the authentication token, we can look here at this extras payload here. And what we can do is we can use this set filter to define a path, and that's what we'll call. We'll do extras.path. And then we can uh, define the value. And in this case, we're taking the role from this user record right here, where the user logs in. And we're storing that information, so the user.role, in this extras.path. So we can actually um, pass that along, the user role, in just the authentication token, OK? So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this and log it in for Michael. And I'll show you why in a second. So this will be michael at email.com and password123. 
So I'm gonna grab this auth token, I'm gonna hit this copy auth token button, and then let's go back and go into this uh, extras method endpoint. So here in the extras uh, method endpoint, we'll notice this endpoint also requires user authentication. Uh, we're not doing a get record because we're passing the role, the information we need in the extras. So if we look at this precondition, now what we can say here is we can say extras.role equals admin, okay? Because that user role is gonna be defined in that auth token. And then if that passes, we'll be able to create all records. So the reason I grabbed that endpoint on the login API endpoint is because um, with this quick auth token lookup here, this is just for a quick valid auth token. It's not actually logging in or signing up your user and passing in that extras payload. Um, so this is purely just for testing. So what I actually need to do is first um, get that extras, get the auth token with the extra and actually copy that and now paste it in here. Um, so now when I go to run this, uh, we'll see I can query all records. So if I was just hit this quick auth token uh, for Michael, the extras wouldn't be in there and I'd hit an error um, because we're unable to find that extras, okay? So one more thing I'll show you with extras if I grab just another user who uh, is a staff role and how their access will be denied. So I'll go ahead, I'll log someone else in here. Um, let me go to run and debug. Instead of Michael, I'll say I'll do Liz again and I'll run this and then I'll copy her auth token and I'll just jump back to that extras method. And now when I go ahead and run this, I'll delete this and actually paste in Liz's auth token with the extras and this will say access denied because her role member is, or her role status is staff. So there you have it, two different ways of using role-based permissions. Um, just be aware if you're using extras and you're testing within Xano, you actually have to grab that auth token from that endpoint instead of using the quick uh, auth token lookup. But both methods work perfectly fine, um, all about preference, and both are secure uh, for your role-based access or role-based permission use cases.